the last full moon of 2023 is here. This is a full moon in Cancer and it hits its peak on December 26th at 7.33 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I love this full moon. I do. It's always like right at the end of the year and I just, I love it because the sun's in Capricorn, the moon's in Cancer and the moon rules Cancer and I just love this energy. I truly do. I think it's just wonderful. It is emotional. It is. But we have some balance here because this wonderful emotional full moon in Cancer, we have balance with the sun in Capricorn, in grounded Capricorn. So it's really great. It really is because it gives us the security that we feel like we can share our feelings with others. We can share our feelings with um about our manifestations or about whatever it is our dreams are. We can share our desires with others and feel secure about it. I love that. I love that. So it's emotional, but it's there's some grounded stuff there too. Um, just a few things. The moon does move really fast. So there's some transits and some aspects, the things that are happening here that are not going to last, but they could have like an influence over you for a day or two. So this moon is square Neptune in Pisces. It's quincux Venus in Scorpio and Pluto in Capricorn. It's opposing the sun, obviously, because all full moons are in opposition of the sun, but the sun's in Capricorn and it's also opposing Mercury, which has just stepped back into Sagittarius. Um, it's trying Saturn, which is in Pisces, and it's a uh, sextile Jupiter, which is in Taurus. So basically what all of this means is it could cause a little emotional unbalance. And I don't want to say imbalance. It's an unbalanced sort of maybe from outside forces. Maybe there's some other things that's going around that's happening around you with family or with work or whatever, your community that could be causing some like, it's not even emotional upheaval like the tarot, um, like the, um, the tower card in the tarot, but it's, there's some stuff going on that you're really going to have to juggle. You may feel really gullible during this time or really impressionable. Um, so don't worry about that as much because really I would rather be gullible or impressionable than be the one that's being deceptive. Mm, yeah. Make sure you're being discriminating in your romantic life. With your love life, with uh, people that you're connected to romantically, make sure that you're really being discriminating there. Try to stay in your routine, um, especially with your work. And this could be your work out. This could be with your, your eating habits or just making sure that you pay your bills or whatever. But make sure that you're staying on your routine. And it's really challenging to do during the holidays, isn't it? Like, I mean, we all want that extra piece of cake. And there's nothing wrong with letting go, you know, for a couple of days. But we need to get back into our routines like once the actual holiday is over. So get back into that routine of making sure your bills are paid and making sure you're staying on your diet or you're working out and being healthy. Take a break and then get back into your routine. Um, be patient with yourself and be patient with your growth. If you're working to grow your business or if you're working to grow a relationship or if you're working to grow your hair out, I don't know. Whatever it is that you're trying to do, make sure that you're being patient with yourself during this time because you can feel that sense of urgency that you just like, oh, I should already be there by now, but not necessarily. So be patient with your growth because really we've come a long way in 2023. This has been a challenging year, which most seven years are. So keep that in mind. Um, but above all, here's what you want to do. You want to be cheerful. Be cheerful during this full moon. 
keep your chin up just say you know what I'm gonna ride this wave it's gonna be all right be cheerful couple of things mercury has gone back into Sagittarius mercury and Sagittarius is not always clear communication sometimes but not always and mercury retrograde in Sagittarius definitely we need to like make sure that we're communicating clearly as clearly as we can and before we jump off the deep end make sure that you step back and you really think things through before you try to force some issue or before you try to make a big decision really think things through here okay because the communication is not clear during this time um, remember Venus is going into Sagittarius as well on the 29th and Jupiter goes direct on the 30th I know and Venus and Sagittarius is kind of a fun thing um, like we could see some risky behaviors here you know New Year's um, but we're also open to some new experiences and this is a very social time for Venus so we love that Venus and Sagittarius it's kind of exciting I'm excited to see what like 2024 brings all of us I mean really I think this is gonna be fantastic just one woman's opinion but let's see what the cards have for this last full moon of 2023 for you Aquarius how you doing well hello and welcome to your readings at the round table I'm Jennifer and my trusted companions are kind of like losing it today Jasmine is curled up asleep she's a good girl um, mouse cannot make up his mind he doesn't know if he wants to go outside and brave the chilly weather or if he wants to stay in here and like bitch about it because that's what he's doing all afternoon in all of my videos he's just been I'm like we'll go outside no he doesn't want to go outside he wants to stay in here in my office and complain loudly because apparently I have something to do with the weather I'm telling you if all the cats were like this we would be in serious trouble I would be in serious trouble because I would be just like yelling at cats all the time can you get called out for the ASPCA for that? I don't know. PETA. It's good times. It's good times, Aquarius. And this is our last uh, Zodiac reading together for 2023. Mm-hmm. 2024 is creeping up on us. It really is. All right, Aquarius. Um, this is a general reading so if it resonates with you that's great and if it doesn't that's okay make sure you check out your Sun moon and rising Sun because sometimes you'll resonate more with your moon or your rising Sun more than you do your Sun sign and remember this is not a horoscope this is a card reading for your horoscopes if you're looking up your horoscope to read or to watch a video about make sure you're sticking with your rising Sun okay let's see what this full moon in cancer the last full moon of 2023 has for us well for you I don't have Aquarius in my chart mm -mm -mm. And that's a shame I think I think it's a shame okay let's see what we got here Okay, 
very interesting. All right, so we're starting off here with the five of feathers, which is strategy and resilience. Then we're going to the nine of shells, which is gratitude and fulfillment. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, then we go to the hermit, which is contemplation and wisdom. And then to the hanged man, which is patience and perspective. And then to the shadow card, which is self-empowerment and ambition. And in the traditional tarot, the shadow card is the devil. But it's not a bad card. It's not a bad card. It really isn't. So the thing is, we're starting off here with the five of feathers, where you... Um, You, you feel like you've overcome something. You feel like you've overcome something. But you don't know if you did like the armadillo and put this hard shell around yourself so that you could protect that vulnerable nature of the Aquarians that I love so much. Oh my gosh. I don't think that you have completely hardened yourself. I don't. I think that you have become a little bit more resilient, but I think now what I'm seeing here with this card is that you only show that vulnerability to certain people. You only show that vulnerability to like when you feel really safe and comfortable. And I don't necessarily feel like it's a bad thing. I feel like that you've learned. I feel like that you're just protecting yourself. And what you've done, Aquarius, is you've sort of made your circle smaller. I don't, I don't know exactly how like to describe what I'm seeing in my head, but I do feel like you've tightened your circle in. You sort of not cut people off in your life, but you've just been like, okay, you know, I get that I'm just an option in your life. So I'm going to go do my thing and I'm going to be here for people that don't make me an option, that do make me a part of their life, right? I mean, we all have friends that we don't talk to every day, but we know when we call them up and we're like, hey, I need this like right now. They're like, okay, um, let me get this together. I can be there in a couple of hours, you know, like those kind of things, um, but we have those connections where we don't have to talk every day, but we know like when we really need them, they're there for us. And I feel like you sort of, you sort of moved out of the area where you don't have as many like people around you that are just treating you like an option. It's a good thing because the next card, the nine of cups, um, the nine of shells, sorry, different deck. Um, <clears throat> gratitude and fulfillment. The thing is, I feel like you're getting everything you want because you're grateful not only for some of the experiences that you've had that have shown you how to make yourself like, um, how to put up those boundaries, make yourself vulnerable only to like selected audiences, but to make yourself like, uh, Protect yourself with boundaries and in a good way. You're getting everything that you want in life and you're grateful. <clears throat> you're so grateful because you're just like celebrating and just being like, oh my gosh, like I hit the lottery. Okay, maybe not literally. And if you did hit the lottery, we need to talk. I'm kidding. Um, <clears throat> but God, my throat today. I'm sorry. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of, there's a lot of amazing things that's coming into your life. Are you done learning? Oh, no. No, we're not. But the Hermit card is giving you that time to have that soul-searching introspection that you need to, like, sort of, um, like, file away that wisdom. To put that wisdom into a place that you know you can reference it later. <clears throat> you know, that kind of thing where you're just like, okay, I, I get this. I learned from this. I'm not going to forget it. And then when you get into a similar situation like that again, you can pull that file out and be like, okay, this is what I learned. There's a lot of stepping back 
like stepping back from the major the major picture the bigger picture stepping back so that you can see like more of what's going on just stepping back and saying okay okay now I see what's happening now I kind of I'm getting it this is a good time for that soul searching introspection and what it's doing is it's changing your perspective it's changing your perception is changing like your point of view and when it changes your point of view it's um it's showing you a different kind of truth it's showing you a different kind of truth it's changing your priorities a little bit i think this is good <clears throat> i think this is absolutely good because our priorities need to change every time we sort of spiritually level up our priorities need to change our like the order of things needs to change a little bit it's like I went from being single and living alone for a really long time to uh, like within three years living with someone getting married and having a baby Oh my gosh, that took a lot of juggling for me because I was just like, uh, dude, hang on. You know, you get married when you're 40 and you're just like, whoa, 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 whoa. I've been single for a long time. This is crazy. Yeah, it changes your perspective. It changes how you see things and it changes the tr your truth about the situation. I do feel like that the the shadow card self-empowerment and ambition there is a difference between being too ambitious and being self-empowered there is a difference and i think that we definitely need to have a balance there you don't want to be like you don't want to be like the person that's like like an attorney chasing ambulances kind of ambitious but you want to make sure that you're being selective with the people that are coming into your life. You want to be selective about who you invite in. And, and I think that it's, a, it's more about releasing, um, releasing attachment to the situation and releasing anger and frustration that, of things that have happened in the past. Once you let that go, I think that it really, there's a lot of, I feel like you gain a lot more patience and I feel like you gain a lot more wisdom. And I feel like these two cards are helping you to release some of the stuff that's in this card. And it's helping you to be more self-empowered. And self-empowerment leads to healthy boundaries, which leads to resilience. I know. It's like constant motion, isn't it, Aquarius? Crazy. But not in a bad way, crazy. <clears throat> not you, Aquarius. And I can't say again, like, you know, who my favorite, like, zodiac sign is. I just can't say that. Because, you know, I'll get called out for that again. But I'll say you're in my top three. How's that? Oh my gosh. I mean, there's only 12. I'm so hilarious. Oh my gosh. And it's a good thing that that's not a contagious feeling because um, there's a lot of people that are just like goofy, not hilarious. I wouldn't want to have to replace Seinfeld, you know, if everybody thought I was hilarious. Interesting. Okay, so we got a lot of sword cards here. And a balance card right on top of that shadow card. Definitely balance here. Let's let's just take a look, shall we? All right, so we're starting off here with the Knight of Swords. Then we're going to the King of Swords. 
the star card, the page of swords, and we're wrapping it up with the two of pentacles. Okay. Things are progressing faster for you. They are like having some momentum here. And I think this has to do with Pluto moving into your sign in January of 2024. And Pluto is camping out there for 20 years. Yeah, he's going to be there for a minute. <clears throat> so there's a lot of things that are shaking out here in this last little bit of Pluto and Capricorn before Pluto moves into your sign for 20 years. There are things that are moving faster and I feel like this is spirit saying, hey, we want you to be prepared. We want you to be ready for the changes that are coming when Pluto moves into your sign. This does, there's a lot of there's a lot of mental energy here um, because that's what swords are. Swords are mental, intellectual, um, <clears throat> rational thoughts. But you're like taking off and you're following your guidance and you're moving really, really fast here. The Knight of Swords is the fastest moving card in the tarot. And that's, I don't know that that's written down anywhere, but that's just Jennifer's like rule. This is the fastest moving card in the tarot. He is ready to take off. He is following his guidance. He's following where he's being led. And he is like, he's setting a pace. This is a sprint. He's ready to go. The, the king of swords is sitting back and going, okay, I've got some hard decisions to make. I'm going to do this um, rationally. I'm going to do this thoughtfully. I'm going to do this like intellectually. I'm going to pull back emotionally. I'm going to sort of detach from the situation and I'm going to really say what needs to be done here. What is the hard decisions that I need to make? And there's a lot of wisdom here. There's a lot of wisdom and there is a lot of spiritual connection. But your spiritual connection doesn't mean that you have to make the decision emotionally. That you have to make these decisions emotionally. Whatever you're going for here, Aquarius, is definitely leading to a fresh start. It is definitely, definitely leading to um, like sort of a cleansing. Like it's like a smudging of your spirit and just like, okay, well, let's start that again. Let's just try this one more time. She is kneeling in the pool of consciousness. This guy, this goddess is kneeling in the pool of consciousness and she is channeling in information and guidance from spirit and she is dropping it into the pool of consciousness. She's sharing it. She's giving herself that awareness, that clarity that she needs to have that fresh start and she's sharing it. This is a wonderful, this is a wonderful energy. It really is. Um, and with that fresh start, you're getting more messages. Remember, all pages are messengers. <clears throat> and now, again, there's more channeling coming in for you. You are being given these messages directly to you from your guides, from your angels. There's just, it's just coming straight in. Whether you need to like document it or whether you're just like, okay, again, I'm collecting this wisdom. It's a good way to put it, collecting the wisdom. But it's helping you to move from one space where I think we've sort of, it's sort of run its course into a new space. And again, it feels like you are making your circle tighter. It feels like you're sort of bringing in and saying, okay, these, these are the people, places, and things that I want to be like a part of my life. These people outside of this circle or this person, place, or thing outside of this circle are options. And you're sort of making your circle tighter. I really do like that. When we're here though, you need to make sure that you are keeping your spiritual self in balance with the, the things that you hold dear here in the physical. Like, you know, your home, your job, your money, your finances, 
your security, your knowledge. You need to keep that in balance, okay? We don't, we live in the physical, so we can't be too much in the spiritual, but we also need to have that spiritual component and keep it in balance. It is very important here. And it's like I said with ambitions and self-empowerment, they're, they're the same, but they're very, very different at the same time. Self-empowerment helps you to create healthy boundaries. Ambitions could get out of control. It's not bad to have ambitions, but we're not, again, <clears throat> we're not going to become ambulance chasing attorneys. And if you're an attorney out there, I'm really sorry. It's just an example. Seriously. My brother's an attorney and he's probably like snarling at me right now for saying that. So this, this is what, this is the ultimate is keeping in balance keeping everything in balance as you are making these changes, as you're going through this fresh start, as you're sitting back and you're collecting this wisdom to use now or to use later, whatever, but keep yourself in balance. It's not a bad thing to set up healthy boundaries. It's not. Other people won't like it. They won't. I don't like it. No, I'm just kidding. But I mean, the thing is, other people will not like it. If they've been used to taking advantage of you, they're not going to appreciate healthy boundaries because that's, that's not what they want. <clears throat> and they, you're not going to get what they want. Yeah. It's tricky. It's real tricky. But the people that honor your boundaries, that's a keeper. <gasps> lime. Put the lime in the coconut. Okay, I'm not, I can't sing. I, first of all, I don't want to get shut down and demonetized for this video. But um, <clears throat> also, I can't sing. And I don't want y'all just like shutting down. But you know the song I'm thinking about? The lime in the coconut song? Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's in my head. All right, Aquarius. It sounds like we're just going to have to go have margaritas together. <laughs> That's what I'll do. I'll like host a whole session of just like me and my favorite Aquarians. And it'll just be like me and a table full of like Aquarians having margaritas, solving the world's problems. Ooh, Rada, Soul Flame. Oh, what a gorgeous card. Ooh, the elk stamina. That sounds really good. Okay. All right. The first of the advice cards, um, Aquarius, is from the animal deck. It is elk stamina. Elk has powerful strength and stamina. By pacing itself and using consistent, courageous actions and communication, it maintains continued success. Honor both the company of your own gender and the opposite to realign with warrior or warrioress energy. Its neck will help you make a bridge for living cooperatively. Wow. That's a, that's a gorgeous card. I'm just going to show that again. 
That's a pretty card. Speaking of pretty cards, the next advice card comes from Spirit. It is Rada Soul Flame. That is a gorgeous card. Rediscover a lost part of yourself. Experience relationship, harmony, and healing. Well, well, well. All right, and the last of the advice cards comes from the Essential Oil deck, and it is Lime. The emotional aspects of Lime, it releases betrayal, discouragement, despair, and resignation. It instills hope, a zest for life, and joy. It creates a strong life force and a desire to want to live and overcome the obstacles that have brought discouragement and despair. The centering thought, my life is amazing and I embrace um, all the wonderful possibilities before me. My life is a joy. And the affirmation, why is my life so amazing? Why indeed? And the chakras are the heart and the throat. Wow. Well, Aquarius, this looks like a pretty awesome moon. And you know, it is a very emotional moon. This is an emotional moon. And we do have some balance here with the sun being in Capricorn. But this is an emotional moon. And it may just be that you need to take a step back from emotion and just look at this very logically. Look at whatever situation you're in, whether it's with your career, your home, your relationships, whatever. Take a look at this and just see where you're putting up those healthy boundaries and who you are going to be vulnerable with. You're tightening up your circle. I hope I'm a part of it. Thank you so much for joining me today, Aquarius. And thank you, thank you, thank you for making this such a wonderful year. I appreciate your support on my channel so much. All the subscribers and the people that watch my videos. I appreciate you so much. This has been, uh, this has been a challenging year, but it's also been very, very rewarding and very joyful. So thank you. I, I really, really appreciate you. Don't forget to watch your monthly numerology because 2024 is literally just around the corner. And I have a video coming out for, um, for all life path numbers talking about the numerology for 2024. And then, of course, I have the numerology for January. Yay! Thank you again for joining me today and this year. Um, and we will see each other again in 2024. So, until then, get out there and make your magic. Bye.